Hello, everybody, and welcome to our Museum Saturday talk. We're very lucky today to be uh, joined by Rias and Naidu, who is going to give us a bit of a talk on Neuf Trois, as well as some of his other projects and how it relates to our eggs exhibition we have on show at the moment, any given Sunday. I know that I did a little bio uh, to introduce Riasen on our last talk last month, but I'd like to do it again for, especially for those who uh, weren't part of that particular talk. I think it gives you some, some good perspective as well. So Riasen Naidu is currently based in Paris. He's an independent curator, writer, researcher, and an artist focusing on modern and contemporary African art. He was born in Durban. Naidu graduated with a BA and MA in Fine Arts from the University of Witwatersrand uh, in Johannesburg. He initially uh, practiced as an artist and has since 2004 curated exhibitions that highlight and overlook uh, that highlight particularly overlooked South African and African art histories. Exhibition highlights include Niftwa in the Parisian suburb of Saint Denis, as well as Any Given Sunday the 1910-2010 from Pirnev to Collective, which was in 2010. Um, and that was also quite a, a stellar exhibition held at the Ezekiel South African National Gallery. There was the Indian in Drum magazine in the 1950s exhibition he did in 2006 that toured nationally. And he curated exhibitions on artists such as Peter Clark in Dakar, London and Paris and on a photographer Ranjith Kali's work in Durban, Johannesburg, Cape Town, Bamako, saint -Denis, Vienna, and Barcelona. He was co-curator of the 10th edition of the Dakar Biennale and director of the South African National Gallery from 2009 to 2015. Naidu was also the director of the Timbuktu Manuscripts Project, managed artistic projects at the French Institute of South Africa, taught drawing and painting at Pitt University, and was in charge of art education at the Durban Art Gallery. And with that, I'd like to hand over to you, Riasen, to take us forward. Thanks very much. Thank you, Robin, thanks. Um, all right, I'm just gonna share my screen uh, immediately. I think you need to enable that on your side. Let me just check that, yeah. Okay. Should work now. Right. Um, and hello everyone, um, happy to be here. Um, fortunately, I realized that um, at the very last minute, we're one hour behind. So I, was, I thought I still had an hour to sort myself out, um, <laughs> but here we are, good. Um, so let's see, uh, talking about Neuf Trois today, um, And um, this is a project that uh, is still going on at the moment um, in Saint Denis. Let's see, right, here we go. It's working now. Uh, I'll just quickly introduce you to some of the artists uh, on the project. There were 13 artists and we had 35 artworks on the project. Just blow that up. So William Kentridge is one of the artists, Mary Sibande, Senzeni Maricela, Shake and Die from Senegal, uh, Lamin M from Saint Denis and from Cameroon, Lebohan Kanye, South Africa, two works. Samuel Fosso from the Central African Republic with his series called uh, African Spirits. Six works there. Kudzani Violet Kwame, who spent some time in South Africa, but now living in the UK. Very talented uh, painter. Botelemi Togo uh, from Cameroon, who lives in Paris, 
with this uh, series, um, New World Climax, which he's been working on for 20 years with different themes. And uh, Dalila Dalias Bouza from Algeria, who studied in uh, France and now lives in Bordeaux with a series called uh, Princess. There were five works there. Francois Xavier Gabre from France and also um, Ivory Coast. Jaleli Atiku from Nigeria in performance. And Le Seur Chavalm from uh, France, from Paris and Saint Denis. And these are our partners on the project. Yeah. That it gives you an idea of the, the artworks um, in the project. And um, okay, we'll, we'll skip the. the um, oh, thank you. Thanks for that, guys. <clears throat> we'll skip the, uh, the soccer videos. Uh, so Niftwa took place um, from the 17th of July and was meant to be for two weeks. I mean, two months, excuse me. You can see it's early in the morning for, for me. This is a, um, a map of, the, of Saint Denis and the artworks uh, laid out in Saint Denis. So you can see there are 16 sites and this is a very iconic uh, church in Saint Denis called the Basilique de Saint Denis, which uh, is extremely historic. It was the inspiration for the more famous Notre Dame in Paris. So uh, Notre Dame was inspired by the Basilique of Saint Denis. And it's also famous because many of the king and uh, queen's tombs are are in this church. So a lot of people come to pay respects to the former kings and queens of France uh, at this church. It was, it was also the first Gothic uh, church in all of Europe. So architecturally, it's, um, it's very important, uh, not only in Saint Denis, but also uh, in France. And uh, on the other side of St. Denis, we see um, this is the railway station, uh, which is the area railway station, which is the TGV uh, connecting the suburbs to Paris. So it means you can get to Paris within five minutes from this uh, station, the area Gare de St. Denis. And connecting the area is an, uh, trams and buses, uh, you know, from the area to other parts. So there's a lot of people walking uh, to and from the area here. And there's also a lot of people in this area around the Basilique de Saint Denis. And connecting these two is Rue de la République, which is here, which is a pedestrian uh, road that sees many thousands of people walking there every day. So, you know, the idea was really to, uh, to bring the artworks to the streets, uh, to the population and the community of Saint Denis. Uh, the majority of who are made up of um, immigrants, um, from all over the world, but a large majority of those immigrants are also from uh, Africa. All right. Uh, okay, we can go to the next image. Uh, these are the partners I was talking about as well. So I started this project two years ago. Uh, I took the area to Saint Denis and um, on the area, I saw that the um, demographics from Paris had changed dramatically. Uh, the train was, you know, uh, mainly composed of people from Africa and uh, also a little bit from Asia, but mainly from North and West Africa. 
And that's when I had this idea to, uh, you know, I, I thought that a project like any given Sunday would work very well in St. Denis. And that's when I started to work on the project and I started to um, contact potential partners. And that process took about 18 to 20 months to get partners to uh, support the project so that, you know, I, we could then realize the project. So for example, we have uh, the museum, uh, Musée du Quai Branly, Jacques Chirac, which is a very famous uh, museum of African and Oceanic and South American art in Paris. The French Institute in South Africa, Christie's in Paris, Henri Ball Stifting in Cape Town, uh, the Center for Slavery and Justice, which is at Brown University in the USA, uh, Musée Paul Elouard in Saint Denis, any given Sunday, as you are know, and you can see at the Rupert Museum. 6B is my main partner, which is, is the artist residency in Saint Denis that hosts uh, 200 artist studios, not for living, but just for working. And the city of Saint Denis, uh, who assisted uh, a lot on this project with authorizations and the vernissage on the, on the 16th of July. Uh, talking about the vernissage. Uh, so this was done by the Ville de Saint-Denis. And uh, we can have a quick look at that, actually. Let's try. Let's see if this YouTube link works. So just to say that the South African ambassador to France, Bojo Siakolo, was the guest of honor. And we did a mini tour with uh, some of the artworks. You can see William Kentridge's work there on site of Franz Fanon. Two of the artists, Lamin M and Jaleli Atiku. And this is talking about Bartholomew Togo's stamps, which were stuck onto the floor. Um, so that gives you an idea of the vernissage and there's some uh, photos as well. And these are two of the artists, uh, Lamin M from St. Denis with the hat and Jaleli Atiku on the extreme right from Nigeria, who did a performance uh, two days later. And they, they are actually in front of the uh, Basilic de St. Denis that I was talking about. Um, this, is, this is a photo from Jaleli Atiku's performance uh, on the Sunday, two days later. And um, we can see him. This is uh, Samuel Fosso's work, um, African Spirits. Samuel Fosso uh, works in incredible way. He's been working in, with a kind of self-portrait in photography. Um, since the age of about 14 or 15, uh, from about 1975. And uh, another artist that works like that internationally is Cindy Sherman. And coincidentally, um, Samuel Fosso did not know about Cindy Sherman's work. They both actually started working in this manner in about the same year, in about 1975. So. Uh, one in the USA and one in the Central African Republic, but 
um, both working in terms of you know, using the self-portrait genre in photography, inserting themselves and taking on other personalities. So in this series, African Spirits from 2008, uh, Samuel Fosso looks at iconic photography of African uh, personalities, African leaders, uh, African cult figures, both from Africa and from the diaspora, from the United States and from um, the Caribbean, etc. And um, takes self-portraits after these figures. So that's actually Samuel Fosso in the photograph after Kwame Nkrumah, the first president uh, of Ghana in 1957. Um, what I want to say is that each of the artists has a, um, a video on their work and you can find that on uh, YouTube. Uh, you can do new, a YouTube search for Neuf Trois or uh, under my name and you'll find uh, the artist works there. Uh, for example, I just go back a little bit. Uh, you know, for Samuel Fosso's work, which I think is was very popular. Let's have a quick look at that. Uh, one, I'll just look. We'll just look at one or two videos. Um, This was a really a special case because we had to install this on in a tunnel and we had to create little canvases of the works. But it also gives you an idea of the process and of the installation. We had an extremely good response while we were installing the works uh, from people walking through the tunnel who recognized the figures in the photographs. Um, and in fact, Samuel Fosser did such a good job that few people realized that um, it was actually, actually Samuel Fosso in the photographs and not uh, the personalities such as Kwame Nkrumah, etc. Uh, Bateli Mitogo um, works, we, we had a look at. Uh, let's have a look at this last uh, video, which is only a minute, but it will give us an idea of Bateli Mitogo's works. He also did a performance in the project later. So you can see these, we used his works and then made uh, prints, which we decided to use onto the floor in front of the city hall, because these works are also talking about immigration. You can see the, the, the Basilica of Saint Denis at the top of your screen there. And these are the prints from the New World Climax series. Okay, so uh, that's uh, Shake and Die. We can see some of his works on the streets. Um, this one, Cinema Unité from uh, Dakar, Senegal. Uh, Sheikh, in fact, when he visits a city um, in his travels, especially in Africa or in the African diaspora, like in Harlem in New York or in uh, Havana in Cuba, he goes to look for some of the old cinemas and starts to photograph them and then starts to compose his paintings. He's quite fascinated by cinemas because uh, they tell a history about that city 
uh, from decades ago, often linked to ideas of modernity, etc. This is on the street uh, August Delon, which is the main street connecting the trams from the area station. Lamin M uh, from his series Moi Lamin M, Melchoir the first. And this relates to um, the Basilique and some of the paintings in the Basilique and Lamin M um, through this performance wanted to insert himself into that history as one of the visiting dignitaries um, to the Basilique. Uh, there were two works by Lamin M in the series and uh, this is the one of them. Senzeli Maricela, uh, one of the works in the street. We used uh, a shop window, uh, vitrine, uh, for her work, Theodora comes to Johannesburg. Also a photograph of a performance, much like Laminem. Uh, these are the five works by Dalila Dalias Buzar um, from the series entitled Princess. So I think what's interesting to talk about here is, you know, the location, the sites, um, because there was a lot of preparation uh, before the sites were identified and then we had to get authorizations to use the sites, uh, you know, whether it was the shop fronts or, um, you know, this is the Mediatheque du Centre-Ville, which is the library of St. Denis. So we had to get permission from them. Behind this work is normally a window. And uh, so we had a limited time. We had a limited time of two months to use the window. Um, and thereafter we had to take the work down. Eventually we used the window for three months and then we took it down because the library needed the window for light. Uh, you know, in Europe, it's already getting dark very early by five o'clock. So um, they need the light for the students, the, the young learners that use the library. So it was a combination of like historic sites, uh, libraries, uh, shop fronts. Um, this is the building of the Salle de la Réunion of um, the Légion d'Honneur, which is, and we use the facade of the site, uh, these little niches, which were perfect to host the portraits by uh, Dalila. Here is another view, and you can see one of the towers of the Basilique de Saint-Denis on the right. So very close to the Basilique. François Xavier Gabré, one of his works, uh, Swimming Pool Number no. 7 from Bamako. And you can see how the works um, are used in the streets and you know how many people actually encounter them uh, on their daily walks to and from home or using the transport hubs. This is the other work by, which is also a photo by Francois Xavier Gabre, uh, a photo of a swimming pool uh, from the University Felix Homport Bonnier in Abidjan in Ivory Coast in West Africa. So I, in choosing and selecting the works, I, I had an idea of the artists that I wanted to work with. And then I you know, went through the archives, went through their works and chose artworks that I thought uh, would resonate with the uh, public of St. Denis. Uh, this is work by Le Seur Cheval, La Nuit de 17 October, uh, 61, 1961. So 17th of October, 1961. And it relates to um, quite a serious incident where Algerians protested uh, against the curfew and against the Algerian war uh, between Algeria and France at the time, which I think was between 1954 and 1962. 
and um, many Algerians were arrested. And the following morning, um, many bodies were found in the Seine, the River Seine. So it's, it's an incident that's not often spoken about in France, but um, this year um, on the 17th of October, 2021, so 20 years after the incident, uh, the French president uh, Macron, Emmanuel Macron actually uh, referred to the incident uh, one of the few instances where uh, French presidents have actually acknowledged uh, what has happened um, on this day in 1961. France has not officially apologized um, for the incident. Uh, a lot of the blame has been laid to the uh, the Parisian police who was under a Nazi, um, he was a Nazi supporter um, and he was in control of the French, of the Parisian police at the time. So most of the blame has been laid at his feet. But this was an important incident and um, I thought it was important to include the work in this project. Uh, William Kentridge, Franz Fanon. So Franz Fanon is, uh, you know, was an intellectual from Martinique, uh, from the island in the Caribbean. Martinique is also part of the French territory. So um, it's still part of France, even though it's in the Caribbean. Martinique, Guadeloupe, uh, we have Reunion Island in the Indian Ocean that are all still territories of France. Uh, these were, um, islands that chose to be part of France uh, at the time in the 1960s, uh, voted not for independence, but to be part of France. And so are still considered states of France and governed by France from Paris. And Franz Fanon was a revolutionary theorist. Two of his iconic books are Black Skin, White Masks, uh, which is a must read. And the other one is um, the wretched of the earth. And these two texts are, you know, considered, um, you know, uh, obligatory in terms of talking about post-colonial theory. So we see another work, another view of uh, William Kentridge's uh, Franz Fanon. I think we have time. So I'm just gonna take you through a little video again. to give you more images of this work. This work is at the Hotel de Table Ronde. And I had several works to choose from, but I had seen this work and um, it's the most recognizable from the series. And I really wanted to include it in this project. So in talking to William Kentridge, uh, his only request was that it be large. And so, you know, I had to find a site for that. So the work is about four meters by three meters on a wall of the Hotel du Tablerand. And then coming back, uh, we have Lebohan Kanye. There's two works by Lebohan in the series. Uh, never light a candle carelessly. Um, and Le Bohan obviously works in stop frame animation. She works uh, with photographs and collage. And um, I've seen some photos of the way she works. And in, in this series, she works uh, almost like a stage setup with uh, silhouette cutouts and, you know, creating 
a theater-like scenario, and then she takes a photograph of that. So there's a lot of uh, depth on the stage set, um, and then she takes a photograph. So quite complicated, and she's working with, uh, or quite complex, and she's working with fiction. And in this particular work, it relates to um, a work by Athel Fugard, uh, which refers to the Owl House, um, you know, which you are familiar with in the Peru. So she's working a lot with fiction and in her work, it's also about the fiction of her own family, uh, you know, that photographs in our family albums are also a kind of fiction because it doesn't tell you the whole truth. And so she works with her own family photographs, family photo albums, and kind of reconstructs new fictions. Very interesting work. Uh, this is the other work by Lebohan, which is near the area train station. This work is still up, both the works are still up uh, four months later. So while the project was only meant to be for two months, uh, many of the works are still up four months later. And in this work, we can see uh, a train, the metro train from South Africa, that is you know, a very common sight, and near the station of the trams and the area. So I wanted to make this kind of curatorial link. Mary Sibande's work at the Wren, uh, which uh, you might be familiar with, which is in the South African National Gallery collection. And uh, it was acquired while I was director there. Uh, this is also a very large work, four meters by three uh, meters. And thanks to uh, the association More A Regard that allowed us to use their, their wall uh, for the work. The work has since been taken down. Um, and here we have Kudzani Violet Wami's work in the streets. Uh, two works in this case. Witness to a dreamscape event on the left and woman and child on the right. And Kwame also works a lot uh, from family photo albums. Uh, but you know what's really important about these works is that uh, you know it talks about black families, about black memories, and the people of Saint Denis, which is mainly African, can see reflections of themselves uh, in these images. That you know they can really relate to their own memories, relate to their own family histories. And this photo gives a, a good idea of what uh, Rue Auguste de Long looks like. And, uh, you know, the architecture, the tram lines that pass through here and the people walking on the streets. So, you know, hundreds and thousands of people encounter the, the works on a daily basis. The, uh, these works are still on the streets today. You can see people just passing. And this is another work by Kudzani Violet Wami, uh, also quite large. This is about three meters by about two and a half meters on, uh, on a cafe uh, window, uh, Au Comptoir de la Gare. Here we see Samuel Fosso's works again, and uh, you get an idea that there's a lot of people passing through the tunnel. And one of the works um, by Fosso is after Nelson Mandela. Another one is of Muhammad Ali, uh, also inspired by um, a portrait of San Sebastian. Uh, yeah, there you see it here. You can see uh, the arrows on Muhammad Ali. So it's a kind of combination. It pays tribute to both Muhammad Ali and uh, San Sebastian. And of course, in this photograph, it's Samuel Fosso 
uh, who is photographed as Muhammad Ali and Saint Sebastian. Oh, I must, I must just keep this image in mind because I think the next slide is going to refer to that. So here you see it again. And this work was actually stolen. Uh, this was um, one morning we found just the frame left behind and the work of Muhammad Ali was actually taken out and uh, stolen one, one evening. Uh, so on the streets, there are five works at the moment. Uh, here we can see the work by Le Sechevam also. Uh, and it, it also got eroded by people um, you know, sitting uh, on the wall. You can get a better idea of the work here as well. Which is a print, it's a triptych print. And here you can get an idea of also people visiting and uh, you know, looking at the, um, the path and discovering the works by themselves. Uh, there was also some tagging of the works. Uh, so, you know, this was an artist that tagged the work of Lamin M in a quite a, an artistic way. And uh, what we found is that uh, thereafter, I don't know if I have an image of that, I don't, but someone had also painted over the tag to kind of restore the integrity of the, the image. But th this is something about working in the public space that once the works are in the public space, you don't have control over them. And uh, the works are also in the, in the space of the, of the people. So people are free to also interact on the artworks in um, any way they feel like. Uh, and so you have to be prepared for that, you know. There's also um, weather conditions that affect the work. Um, so the work might look completely different from one day to the next, depending on the weather, depending on the public that, um, you know, how the public interacts with the work or how certain members of the public or individuals uh, react to the works. Uh, Mary Sibande's work, for example, uh, which we were taking down as well, which uh, at this stage, I thought it looked quite poetic. Since any Maricela's work again. Oh, yes, I wanted to show you this, uh, this video. So what happened here was that uh, I was doing a, a late night tour in summer and, um, you know, I discovered that, um, that, uh, you know, the, the, the shutters were rolled down and the shop was about to close. And so we got the owners to, um, to, to open it, especially for the people that I was doing the tour for. And I thought that this was quite poetic. This video was taken by Federica Marchesini, uh, but it was quite a treat to actually see it with the shutters. And of course, we had to do some maintenance on the work. So uh, over time, you know, there was a lot of rain. Also the surfaces uh, sometimes were not perfect. So there were cracks in the walls. And so we had to repair uh, the works over time. Um, so, that, you know, over the last three or four months, there was a lot of maintenance to the works where it was possible. In other cases, we let the works erode naturally. And, um, you know, this is a very important aspect of the project is that it's an ephemeral art project. So the works are not meant to last indefinitely. They are meant to weather and erode over time. And that's part of the beauty of um, this kind of way of working is to see the artworks change. 
So time is a very important aspect um, of the work, is to see the works evolve and to change over time with weather and other factors. Uh, so we did a lot of maintenance to the works. Um, and then there were lots of visits over the time. This was a school from St. Denis of 13 to 14 year olds from Collège Elsa Triolet. Uh, from institutions like the National Art History Institute, where I spent some time, uh, from Paris College of Art, another group from Paris College of Art, a bigger group. Um, so you get an idea of, uh, these, these were mainly people who requested to us, who approached me and uh, requested to us, but of course the works are on the street. So, uh, yeah. So I think uh, that's probably, that's, yeah, that's, that's what I have. Uh, Robin, maybe we can take some questions at this point. Yes, sure. Thanks, Riasen, for that. Yeah. Um, Pleasure. We do have a, a couple of questions slash comments here. One is, just scroll. Did the shops take to the idea or was there some negotiation that had to be done? So I would think that's on the shop fronts um, where works were installed, you know, were the shops then happy to, to, to be part of it? Or was it a, a process or a difficult process? Yeah, um, no, I was very pleasantly surprised because most people uh, actually um, responded very, very well to, um, to the requests. And um, most, of the people we approached, both in terms of the kind of libraries, the public spaces, the public institutions and sites, and as well as the private uh, shops like Orient Cash, for example, uh, they were very keen to be part of the project. You know, uh, also we had the backing of the Ville de Saint Denis, the suburb, the municipality of Saint Denis, so people. Uh, you know, we had that backing, which, which helped a lot. Um, so people were very keen to be part of that project. Uh, you know, I was quite, I was very pleasantly surprised. Um, I think normally in South Africa, you would have to negotiate a bit more. Uh, but here in St. Denis, people wanted to support the arts. Um, you know, they wanted to do their bit uh, to make things possible in their um, suburb. So we had a very, very good response. Uh, there was just one or two cases where people did not respond at all. And, uh, but we were warned about this uh, in advance. And then we had to choose other sites. So meaning, uh, you know, sometimes we you know, got an email from um, you know, an advertisement and went to look at the sites and tried to trace the, the owners either of a property of an apartment block or of um, uh, a shop. And sometimes we didn't get a response. And then I, you know, I chose another site. So mostly, you know, 95% we had a very good response in terms of uh, getting the sites that we wanted. Okay. Um, there's also a comment on the Kentridge works and saying great choices. Then there was another question. Was there more interaction with these works, like by the tagging, etc., than compared to any given Sunday in Cape Town? So more interference, maybe. Was there more or less? Um, I think, let me... Uh talk about the choices uh, mm -hmm. first and then the interferences. 
in terms of the choices, I, um, you know, it was very important for me to, um, to choose artists that are working in a socially engaged way, firstly, like with any given Sunday. Uh, but at the same time, the aesthetics and the art is also important. So it's not just a matter of working with socially engaged artists, it's also about the artworks, you know, what the yeah, artworks say, um, you know, are they communicated in an artistic way? Uh, so it's also about, you know, the aesthetic and formal criteria of the artworks. And um, I chose artworks that would resonate with the African community in St. Denis. So, you know, you, we see this in this work here where um, Hwami references works from her own family, photo albums, and, you know, Lebohan Kanye, for example. Uh, you know, we, we see that in the, in, in the artworks. Um, because if we look at the history of contemporary African art in Paris, uh, the Parisian institutions have not really um, taken to contemporary African art. It's taken a long time for this to be acknowledged in Paris. Uh, previously, you know, what has been celebrated has been African masks and traditional African art. So the idea was to bring contemporary African art to the streets, but also for the public of Saint Denis and especially its African community to see reflections of themselves, of their own histories in the streets. So, so this was uh, what guided me in terms of the selection of the artworks. Uh, so Franz Fanon, for example, by William Kentridge, I knew uh, would be immediately recognizable uh, because he's like a hero in the African community. Um, you know, and so on a political level, it's the, the same, uh, for example, with the works of um, Samuel Fosso with his self-portraits. And then of course, there are other works that are more intimate and more uh, talk more about the family, uh, you know, such as Kuzani Vali Twami's work. Uh, in terms of the tagging and the interferences, uh, there were um, not many. There were one or two instances of that, uh, mainly with Lamin M, we saw that tagging, and um, with the work of Lesser Cheval, uh, you know, when I showed you the, the, the people sitting on the bridge. But, uh, and also, excuse me, with Samuel Fosso. Uh, because what we saw was that people started to write onto the borders oh. of these works. And strangely enough, as with the Lamin M, I don't have a detail of that uh, here, but I'm, I, I need to take some photos of that. It's still, uh, it's still possible. It's still on the street, it's still in the tunnel. But people started to write things on the edges of the works. And um, strangely enough as well, uh, someone had also taken white paint and then painted over those tags. So I'm not sure if it's the same person that uh, also painted over the tags on the Lamin M work, but um, someone was trying to restore the works. <laughs> I don't know who it is. Um, I asked Lamin M if it was him that had done it on his works. He said, absolutely not. He liked the tags. Hmm. It shows the history of the of the works, and I should also mention that uh, Samuel Fosso was also very flattered that one of his works had been stolen. I would have been very uh, excited by that too. That's <laughs> incredible. Yeah. Even um, the engagement because, of of the writing, you know, it almost enriches the whole the whole thing, the whole idea. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So you know, it means that people are engaging with the work and. In some ways, it means that um, the you know people want to uh, be associated with the artwork mm -hmm. by signing their names or writing something on it. Uh, so it's a positive indication in in most instances. Mm -hmm. And what I should say is that the, the the project was only meant to be for two months, but 
uh, I would say about 60% of the artworks are still on the street. And uh, we will only take them down if there is really bad damage uh, because of rain and wind, etc. Or if the partners, uh, because we have different partners for the sites that gave us permission to use the sites, if they ask us to take it down because of a time limit or because they need their sites for other purposes. So the artworks will continue to remain in the public space until such time as we need to take them down. And it's on a case by case basis. So, um, so most of the artworks are still uh, for the public to enjoy in the space. Okay, fantastic. Um, then there was also a, a question more on, um, let me just see here where it is. One was the, so and I'll get to that one afterwards. Let's first do, there was, it seemed that there was more of an emphasis on, particularly on African historical figures um, as compared with, with eggs in, in Cape Town, for example, um, and often portrayed in quite a, a formal and regal manner. Um, it appears as if the, the artists were also uh, reclaiming the space, asserting themselves on the space in a way that's, that makes me think of what was happening with um, Setembele and Cezanne's work in looking at public sculpture and public figures in and around Cape Town where these are, you know, uh, colonial figures and so on. And she was then taking onto herself a way of, of, of reclaiming that. And it seems that there's a, a correlation between the two spaces in, in that approach. Um, this, I think in your, more, in your choices that you spoke about earlier, you were kind of alluding to it, but these were very instigated by you or more something that the artists came up with themselves? Um, is that a comment from someone? That's a comment with, with a, a bit of a question. I'm putting a bit of a extra wangle on it. Okay. No, it's great to have this uh, feedback um, from everyone. Thanks for the questions and the comments um, and the interest. Uh, yeah, so, you know, these two projects, first I must say that any given, uh, Niftra was inspired by any given Sunday. I, I took the Ariar to St. Denis for the first time in September, 2019, the, the 6B artist residency invited me to talk about a project to curate something in their artistic space. But this didn't interest me. And what interested me was just, um, you know, seeing the dynamics change, seeing the demographics change, you know, seeing a, an African suburb uh, of Paris just here on the outskirts. And then I thought immediately of any given Sunday. And that's how the idea came to mind. And I thought any given sun, a project like any given Sunday would work very well in St. Denis. So that was in September, 2019. And in November, 2019, two months later, I drafted a proposal for Neuf Trois. So it started out being um, really, you know, kind of doing another any given Sunday in St. Denis. But as the project went along and, you know, we, inaugurated Neuf Trois in July, 2021. So it was 20 months later, uh, the dynamics changed. And uh, Neuf Trois became a project in its own right. So some of the differences are that Any Given Sunday was a very ephemeral project. It, you know, uh, sometimes there were performances that lasted an hour, for example, with Gerald Machona in the factory in uh, Altis River, or Stembile Mesezane in the Cape Town Gardens, which lasted two hours, was a performance of two hours, or even Zanele Mohale's photos around the Cape Town train station that didn't even last a day. Mm. Um, these became, the, you know, the, 
the images on NIFTRA became much more longer lasting. And you could see the uh, images change over time, you know, either with tagging from the public or the weather affecting the artworks, you know? And so you can really see time passing with, um, you know, on the Niftwa project, whereas uh, any given Sunday was really ephemeral. It only lasted an hour or two, and the videos and the photos were the traces uh, of the, those interventions, you know, on those days. I mean, for example, we are four months later and most of the artworks on Niftwa are still in the public space. Uh, talking about the formal qualities, um, you know, each of the artworks had to be treated differently. So for example, Samuel Fosso's artworks here, we could not use the poster print uh, collage technique in the tunnel, and I really wanted to use the tunnel because a lot of people are passing through. The train station is just above, uh, so you see this, you know, this support mm. above. The trains are passing across there every day, and um, this surface is stone, so uh, we, you know, and it's a very rough kind of stone. So posters would not stick onto the surface. So we had to create a frame and use vinyl uh, for these images. And this was an exception. Uh, other works we used kind of like a, a film poster uh, material, which were then glued onto the shop fronts or onto surfaces like William Kentridge onto the wall, Mary Sibande onto the wall. Uh, so each uh, case had to be treated differently but in most instances, we used a kind of poster technique and depending on the surface, on how long it lasted. I hope that gives some idea. Yes, yes, thank you. Um, we, we do have to wrap up now, but I think there's one more question perhaps that I could frame for you. Could you tell us more on the engagement during the run of Niftwa of the artist with the art world? Um, okay, so if I can add my spin on that as well, um, what I'd like to ask is, you keep mentioning, you know, this, this is a very ephemeral um, way of working um, and et cetera, et cetera, but how do you see this continuing forward or, or kind of uh, the conversation continuing forward? As a, as a curator who would want this project to then have a continued effect into the future and on, and on other projects. Um, thanks, Robin. Yeah, uh, just to go back to the artists firstly, um, mm -hmm. you know, with any given Sunday, the artists and I uh, discussed where the interventions would take place, you know? And for example, uh, Stembele Mesizane, it was important for it to take place in the company gardens, company's gardens, company's garden, I think it is. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, you know, with Gerald Machona, I found the factory, the textile factory to find resonance with his work that dealt with tailors and textiles, you know, foreign tailors. And uh, Burning Museum, we kind of compromised with the Boer Cup site. Uh, you know, the idea was also not to duplicate sites and to spread the artworks around Cape Town. But with um, Niftwa, I chose all the sites. Uh, also, many of the artists were in different parts of the world, in, in different countries in Africa, in different parts of France uh, also, for example. And so the artists were not on site with me, most of them. You know, there were maybe two, there were two artists from Saint Denis, uh, Lamin M and Le Sir Chavam. And then there was also um, Jaleli Atiku who came and did a performance. So we discussed that while he was there. But for most of the other artists, I, uh, you know, I moved to Saint Denis also in December last year. So I was based, I'm still based in Saint Denis. And I had then the luxury of walking around the city and looking at sites and matching the artworks with the sites. Um, so 
so they, it, there are lots of differences between any given Sunday and Niftra, but at the same time, lots of similarities. But each project had its own uh, history in terms of the, the choice of sites, how long the artist works, you know, were on the sites, and um, you know, the, the decisions of using the sites with the artworks. So um, there, there were similarities, but also lots of differences uh, between the two projects. Where to from here, uh, we'll have to see. Uh, this project was not planned. I wanted to take the concept of any given Sunday uh, outside of Cape Town to other cities. And it so happened that I was in France and this, I made this real, you know, uh, realize in um, Saint Denis. Uh, we'll have to see whether there's interest elsewhere. And of course it takes a long time, you know, you have to raise funding I'm working as an independent curator, so I'm not with an institution. Uh, so these projects, this took two years to be realized. You know, fundraising itself took 18 months. Uh, most of the artists loved the idea of the project and I had no hesitation at all from the artists. So it was really about the funding. The artists were obviously all paid um, an honoraire, you know, for their participation. Mm -hmm. but they would have uh, been uh, part of the project with or without the funding. Uh, so it was really great. And I must thank the artists and the partners and also with the city of St. Denis and also the, the site partners that were very enthusiastic about the project. And thank you, Rupert Museum, for hosting the talk and for hosting Any Given Sunday. That's amazing. Yes, um, I know you're also working on a, a publication. Um, so I don't know if I can maybe hear a little bit more about that. Yes, so the publication is um, almost ready. Uh, we were hoping to have it ready by the middle of December. Mm -hmm. And that's something I needed to talk to you about. I know that a lot of people take holidays over December and January. Uh, what is the situation at the museum? But we, the publication will, it looks like now it will be ready by uh, the middle of January. I was just a bit concerned about the summer holidays in mm. South Africa. Mm. Um, it, does, it does get a bit quiet around mid-December to very early January. So, so that timing sounds good, what you're saying, mid-Jan. Mid and uh, um, I know most people, most staff are also taking leave, right? Correct, as well. Yeah. We're so, we're, uh, so the publication is coming out. Uh, we have about six uh, scholarly articles already done. And um, there are also interviews with each of the artists, you know, Zanele Mohole, Gabriel Goliath, um, you know, uh, Stembele, Mesezane, uh, there are nine different artists. We even have an interview with Madusini. So the idea is that the publication uh, will be part of a national uh, newspaper, weekly newspaper, and it will be a supplement in there. And we are just finalizing the arrangements before we go into layout and, and printing. But I'll talk to you about that. And uh, uh, I don't want to preempt uh, the publication. Uh, I'll talk to you about that so that we can uh, make an arrangement to, you know, to have this out and to have it available at the Rupert Museum, uh, if possible, while the uh, exhibition is still on. Correct. No, that's perfect. I just thought we should highlight the, 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 the publication and it's coming because um, I'm also very much looking forward to that. And I think it'll be a lovely way to, to end the project with us in terms of the, the physical exhibition that we've got on show. But furthermore, I just really want to thank you for sharing with us more about Niftwa. Um, I feel like I was there now and experienced some of, some of the performances and some of the, um, the interventions in the space. 
So I hope that our viewers had a similar experience and um, this will be available on our YouTube channel as well. So it can be revisited and I think will be used definitely as, as um, research as well by, by many of the, the art students that come and visit our museum. So thank you, Liasen, and for making yourself available also for realizing the, the um, daylight savings hour that, that you, you lost there, <laughs> but yet being ready for us. It was really a fantastic talk today. We are so happy to be able to include it in our Museum Saturday program. We wish we could have you talking at all our Museum Saturdays, but we won't, um, <laughs> we won't lump that on you. And furthermore, yeah, we look forward to when you next do come down to South Africa. Normally, if you were in the physical space now, I'd present you with a, a lovely bottle of wine or something, but um, I'll have to do that when I, when I next see you. Uh, Robin, save those bottles of wine. I'm coming for them. <laughs> um, but before I go, I just want to uh, tell our uh, audience that you can uh, see more about Niftra on the Facebook page. This is the, uh, the Facebook page, Niftra, a public art project in St. Denis. So, and then uh, I've also learned, only learned to use um, Instagram uh, with this project. And uh, so I'm only an Instagram user for the last uh, four months now. And you can see many more uh, of the photos. Here we can see Samuel F uh, Fossil, uh, who came to visit the project. This is Shake and Die, who came to visit the project as well, standing with his works. But uh, you can also see more on the Instagram page, which is niftra underscore public underscore art. And there are many more photos, and there's also links to some of the media coverage, uh, both on the Facebook page and on the Instagram uh, pages. So please uh, like and follow our pages. Uh, I'm four months now an Instagram user, and uh, I've taken to it. Um, you know, uh, I'm I'm now a fluent user. Oh, okay, so fantastic. <laughs> Okay, so thank you so much to everybody for your questions and comments. Uh, great, and I hope you enjoy the Any Given Sunday exhibition, which is at the Rupert Museum currently. Thanks so much. Thanks very much, Riasen, and for sharing the Niftoa details, Instagram and Facebook as well. We'll, we'll check it out. Thanks and uh, goodbye, everyone. See Cheers. You Bye. Yeah, bye.